Robert from First Gen Industries here. Today we're going to be talking about installing one of these Mopar reproduction red stripes on your 91 to 93 LE tailgate. So that would be these guys here. Um, if you have a 91 to 93 Dodge Ram, whether it's 150, 250, or 350, or Ram Charger, these stripes are the same. And today we're going to go through the install of how you actually install one of these stripes. Um, when you order these from First Gen Industries, you have the ability to get an install kit. Highly, highly recommended, and today in the video I'll show you why. Uh, but this will come with everything you need to actually install your uh, stripe back onto these tailgates and have it looking good. Uh, one of the biggest things that I can't stress enough is these are semi-transparent. When you peel the backing off of this, Dodge used the original st brush stainless on these trim panels to actually show through as the texture behind these decals. So when you peel this backing off, you're actually going to be able to look through it and you'll be able to see your shelving or whatever is in your garage behind you. You will see through that. So cleaning up this surface on your tailgate is imperative to having this decal look good. So let's get started. So on the tailgate, this is the original surface of where the red stripe was attached. And most times what happens with these stripes is as they age, the vinyl tends to change. It's a specialty type of vinyl, but it does still change over time and it will shrink and it will lose its adhesion on top of the stainless panel. So what happens is you'll either have the panel will have the red stripe peel off. In some cases it will leave residue and in most cases the water has gotten down and behind over the years and it leaves this textured surface that we're seeing here. Because it is a semi-transparent uh, stripe, this surface that you have here, if you don't clean it up, you will see through that uh, stripe and now it's not going to look good. The brush aluminum that you can see here look, uh, or brush stainless, they both have the same look. That's the texture we need to create here again. Clean up all this old garbage that's on there and then we'll be able to attach a new stripe without any issues. This is the install kit uh, should you choose to order it. We have several items in here. You're going to have your install application tool. You're going to have two of these specialty uh, cleaning rags. They're a little different than rags. They're lint free which is going to be key. You have two different scour pads here. These are different uh, scrub textures. This is a much more aggressive one and this is much finer which is used for the final finish. And then we have an installation fluid here which is going to assist us when we actually go to install that decal on top. So first thing you want to do, obviously you have a texture here. We're going to take the more aggressive of the two pads and the key is here and you can see it on uh, the rest of the stainless. These panels were brushed from left to right, not up and down. These pads will create that same texture. So when you are using these, do not go up and down, do not go in circles. You will have to do a consistent left and right. And this left right action will actually slowly take this off and it will put the factory grains back in here as if it had been just machined on uh, one of the stainless machines that actually put that texture into it. So this is where we begin and we start doing a scrub. This is not a very fast job and depending on how much damage, sometimes there's scratches in here, sometimes it's just surface markings and dirt. Um, this will really depend on obviously how bad it is. But in general, this is about a 10-15 minute job to do the whole panel properly. You can already see here, we're a couple minutes into this, but I'm going to do a quick spot here just to kind of give a visual. You notice these pads are actually the correct width. If you start scraping on this side or this side, it will either polish or scratch either side. So try to keep it center for where it's being polished. Work the sides and the edges a little bit. Those areas tend to unfortunately get the worst. They're one of the hardest areas to clean as well. So we're gonna get the two edges here. So if we do a comparison here now, you can see that this has already started to change. We've got all the light scratches and we've got all the dirt out. When you do a comparison to either side, uh, you can see what's changed. Hard 
parts to clean on here is around the handle. If you do too much side action, that will show. What you can do is a little bit of side action to take some of this that's right on the edge here out. And then what you'll end up doing is just over top of it, you'll do some back and forth motion and that will actually take out your light scratches from going left to right. Um, same for along here, this isn't too bad. Just make sure you get underneath the handle lip and you're gonna have the same repeat for this side. A little bit of side action can happen but then you're gonna have to give a good chunk of forward back motion here to actually work out whatever your marks are that you just put left and right. That will definitely show through your decal, so you definitely wanna make sure you do that correctly. But as you can see, this one's slowly coming along here. We've got all the surface crud off now. Mostly what I'm working on now is trying to get the scratches out. Uh, once the scratches are out, then I can do the fine polish. This one unfortunately has had a tough life, this panel, but it makes a great demonstration here today it's just so everyone can see what can be done with it. Now we've finished with the main scour pad. You can see that we've taken all of the upper surface crud off. You can definitely see a couple scratches and dings that are on this gate. Um, unless you want to start trying to hammer out these little dings from the backside, but the problem is this insert here was actually a two-piece design when these tailgate trims were manufactured. So unless you can peel off the VHB that the factory used, there's no real good way to get at the back of these. So. For the case of many of these, what I end up doing is I try to clean them up as best I can and you know that, that's the best that can be done. If you can find a better one to start with, that might be a better option. But now that we've done the heavy pad, now I'm going to go to the fine pad. You can already see the grain starting to show. This one will now totally change how this looks. And this is going to start looking a bit more polished and shiny because this is going to be your upper surface coat now. You'll notice how the grain's starting to come out here. You can see right in here that we're really starting to get a nice, almost that mirror finish starting. And you can also see the grain that's showing up. This is also a good time to buff out any small marks that are, might have been left over from the big one. As you clean the surface, you'll get a much better visual of what's left. And we just continue our way down. Now that you have this polished, and you can spend anywhere from an hour to five hours, depending on how nice you want the surface. Obviously, the more time and effort you put into it, the nicer the surface will come out. Uh, next thing that you have to do, I use isopropyl alcohol. Um, you can use brake clean technically, you can use anything that's going to be a good degreaser on this. You need all the dust gone, you need everything to be 100% clean. So in this case I'm just going to use some rubbing alcohol and this is going to take off all of that dust. Um, I do highly recommend that after you finish polishing this and your hands are going to be black covered in this material that's coming off, which you can see on here already, um, I do highly recommend you wash your hands, otherwise your hands are going to contaminate the surface and unfortunately all this particulate will be seen underneath the decal. Um, again, when Dodge made these brand new, it was in a perfect environment. Uh, 30 years later, these tailgates are far from perfect, but obviously try to do as best you can. I do normally one or two wipes. It doesn't hurt anything. That's what these uh, lint-free towels are for. Make sure you get everything out of here because you don't want any dust or contamination. You want this to be very clean. Dust and debris will show through. All right. So with the surface now clean, allow it to dry for a minute or two, and then the next thing that we're gonna end up doing is installing the stripe. We have special install fluid that comes with this. This is something that's used by the graphics industry. When you're applying these stripes without this stuff, the moment you make contact, 3M makes a very good product and it's extremely sticky as many people know. The moment you make this stripe touch the surface, you're done. And that we have played with this here at First Gen Industries a lot. We have screwed up many of these. And I'll also tell you that once you screw it up and you have to peel it back off, it's not reusable. And it is quite difficult to pull off. The idea is that these are gonna stick on these tailgates for another 30 years. So you wanna make sure we do it right. But that's what this magic fluid is for. You'll end up spraying on this full surface and on the backside of the decal. 
and then when you lay it down you have an application pad and this pad has two sides one is felt and that is critical for ensuring that it doesn't get scratched the other side is a plastic side you can use it if you'd like I have found that my experience has been it scratches the upper surface a bit so I do recommend uh, use the felt side and effectively what we're going to do is we're going to scrape left to right scraping the, the fluid that's going to be on the surface out from underneath it but that allows you to position the the stripe before it actually sticks down. That's why I highly recommend this install kit, but let's, let's do it firsthand so you can see what's involved. All right, so now our surface is dry, it's clean. So what we're gonna do is, this is gonna be a two-person install, and there's a couple of do's and don'ts with this stuff. There's a reason that this ship's in a giant box flat. If you are to coil this, this material will kink and it will actually leave lines. Same reason that if you stick this down and you don't like it and you start to pull it off, any kink in this material and it will mark. And that stays with it permanently, unfortunately. So you get it in a flat box, try to keep it flat. The general idea of what's going to be done here is we're going to spray the surface. And with two people, one person is going to try to hold it up at a 45 degree angle. The backing will start to be peeled off. This will be in position, and then slowly as we go, we'll pull the backing off, and then we're actually going to wipe the fluid out and just keep working our way down. That's the install procedure for this. So this is where we actually will bring a helper in now, and we're actually going to do this as it needs to be done. So first things first, we're actually going to spray the surface. And you've got a lot of uh, fluid in this bottle, so use as much as you need. The more the merrier when it comes to this. As long as that sticker canted here, you'll still be able to move it around, you'll be able to pull it back off. And the other beauty is that any dust particulate that ends up in here, you'll be able to squeegee out. And that's, that's definitely key for this. So we're gonna start by peeling this. And this is really good adhesive. So again, one time shot and try to make sure that the stripe doesn't touch anything that is going to be contaminated. So let's position it around the handle so that we have our correct starting distance. And the key with this is to set it just inside of the edge of this aluminum piece. And position here. Make sure that if you start a little bit crooked, although it's a little bit out here, by the time you get down toward the handle or the other end, it will be significantly off of position. You can peel back a bit more. So this is where we can now actually start wiping. Once you've wiped this fluid out, it will begin its adhesion process. So if you need to do any changes of position, do that before you start squeegeeing this material out. You don't want to push too, too hard. Medium pressure is all you need. We've come up to the handle here. This is actually a die cut, so everyone is actually identical. Uh, this is where you have to make sure that you get around it properly. Try to get one side at least fairly solid before you get down to the other side. This fluid does evaporate and you don't want it to dry when you're working on the other side. And then we got to spray the rest of it here. And again, don't skimp on the spray. Having this felt a little bit damp, if you need to do a pre-spray on here, it's not bad. That helps it glide. This is a bit of a sticky material by the nature of the way it was designed, so if it becomes too sticky, it will grab on you. Make sure you stay square and aligned. Then position the final. This material will stretch a little bit. Although it's made exact length to fit on here, you may have to adjust things slightly. Pull it and 
you know, it, it will line up perfectly. It may already line up perfectly. Some of that is temperature based because this material will expand and contract, but you won't need to pull it much. It should normally be within a couple thou. And once you've got it positioned, now you have to do your final squeegee. So try to get as much out as you can. This is where you can use a little bit of the plastic side because you really want to get the rest of that liquid out. It will dry, but this just assists. Once you have done one squeegee with the plastic, it will take your liquid off the surface. You don't want to do it a second time because that can scuff this material. As long as it's covered in liquid, it won't be bad. We have a little bit of a dent here in this one that you saw earlier in the video. Try to squeegee out the water best you can. If you're finished with that, you have a second cloth that was here. This is what you're going to absorb all the remaining liquid with. As you've been squeegeeing it out, it will fill the track on either side. Just so it doesn't stay in there, wipe it out with this cloth. You can wipe your surface with it as well. It is scratch free, it's lint free. So with the stripe installed, this is what it looks like. Nothing restores one of these panels better than a brand new red stripe. That is what we're all after on our trucks is to have that coveted red stripe on there and let's face it, any of the aftermarket vinyls and stuff that decal shops do, none of them look right. This is a very unique material that 3M made for this application and to do it right, there really is only one way. To order, please go to firstgenindustries.com and these are in stock ready to ship. And you can order it with or without the install kit. As you can see here today, there's a lot of tools to be able to do this. I highly recommend the install kit, uh, but it can be ordered without if you already have a lot of these tools at home. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, you know where to find me, Robert at firstgenindustries.com. You can also find us on Instagram under firstgenindustries. Thanks so much.